Sabbath, everybody. I'm here with my uh, brother, Dan. Um, he doesn't want to be on the video or nothing like that, but he's here with me. And um, we talked this week, and I said I wanted to really show him the key of David and, and, um, and the significance and importance it is to um, in these end days. And it has to do, it really does have to do with um, getting yourself ready, overcoming, and, um, and keeping your nose in the word of God and telling the truth to the people. The unjust steward has no guile on his mouth and he tells you to quickly write a check for half. And there's, it's linked to all those things because God made provision for his people to be able to repent very easily. Their hearts are for the other people. They're not for their, their own, trying to save their own lives. Pardon me, they're trying to save other people's lives as well. So, um, because they see. The Word of God has a lot of information in it, and it's based on how much God loves His people. His Messiah died for His people, and that's why these, these absolute treasures are in the Word of God. It's, I can a little bit, but this is about the key of David. I, I don't have to explain why. The Bible tells you it, it's from dawn to dawn. That's, that's what, uh, there's other, there's, uh, I have videos already made about the, the Sabbath beginning at dawn. They're already in my list of, of um, videos. You just got to go back and find, I don't remember the name, but it'll be in the title somewhat. And there's another one where my close brother Isaiah took what I taught him and then he expounded on it even more and shows you even in, in, in history, Babylonian history, how they changed. They just, they just adapted the, the Babylonian traditions in the Pharisaic ways. And that's why they keep Sabbath from, he shows you the history. He shows you even what the, the rabbis say and everything like that. Plus he shows you way more scripture than me about um, the Sabbath beginning at dawn. So this is uh, the key of David with a big, mighty arm, right? Because it's to the these are to the kings. These are the this is the prophecy of the end. This is going to make people angry, some of them, but it's also it's educational. I um when I grew up as a kid, and reading the Bible and being raised in the Word of God, and really never ever really knowing what these things mean. My heart was always pricked. What's the key of David? And, and then you, you see that even in the churches, they talk about it a lot. So we're going to start off. I'm starting off in Matthew 12. It, it's worthwhile. I'm going to go through as much scripture as I possibly can about this subject. And, and so it's worthwhile that you chew on the word of God yourself. Eat it and swallow it. And if it, if it, if it enlightens you to the point where you're just in awe, then, then receive, that's the receiving of the key of David. If you can actually receive it in your heart, then, then you would have it. You know, it's, the key of David has a purpose to it. Uh, one is that you would put off and do this fast because it's way more important to you to have the key of David than it is for your own lusts or... And, and the other part of it is that you can even see it, hear it, and actually love to see what's in this book. That because You have to have the desire for it and the hunger for it. So here we go. Matthew 12, Yeshua starts teaching the key of David. At that time, Yeshua went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were hungry and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. This is true. It's not lawful for them to do this. But he said unto them, Have you not read what David did when he was a hungered, and they that were with him, how he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Now the, the showbread was um, made for the, on the Sabbath day. And, um, and so we're talking, we're directly talking about the Sabbath here. Now, 
the priests were allowed to eat it, and the priest, in the next verse, the next few verses, or have you not read in the law how the, on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple, but if you had known what this means, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, you would have not condemned the guiltless, for the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath day. The Son of Man. There's a lot of references to the Son of Man. Ezekiel was the Son of Man. Daniel was the Son of Man. The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. And even in your law, what was that? Uh, Psalms 82, 6. Even in your law, it tells you that you have the power to become the sons of God. This is what it's talking about. That's very key. To understand. And that's in John what? Dan? John. You don't remember? It's in John. In the Gospel of John. He tells you, he's quoting, he's quoting Psalm 80. I just don't remember where it is in the Gospel of John, but it's earlier. He's arguing with the Pharisees there. This has, has to do, it's a, it ties in. Now, a couple chapters later in Matthew, I believe it's 18, maybe it's 19. Can't remember where it is. Can you look up the word in, in Matthew, um, the word eunuch? Oh, wait a minute. I think I found it. Maybe not. Okay, here here we go. It is. I found it already. Go to math, uh, Matthew 18, verse 11. Actually, I'll just read from verse 10. His, di his disciples said unto him, If the case of man be so with his wife, is it not good to marry? Okay? His, his disciples asked him that. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom it is given. Not all men can receive this saying, save, save those who it was given. For there, some, for there are some eunuchs which were so born of their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men, and there are some eunuchs which have been made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. That's what he's talking about. Same thing. Now, going back, we need to go to... This is the one I always forget where it is. Um... We got to go find out what David and the priest did. And I think it's in Chronicles. No, it's in 1 Samuel. That's, I should have made sure I remembered this before I hit, I hit the play button. My bad. 1 Samuel, I think it's chapter 20. I know I circled the verses if I get there. 20 or 21. Yep, yeah, there we go. 20 or 21. It's in 21. 1 Samuel 21. And it's this, this, the way it's, I, I have a hard time reading this out loud because of the names and stuff like that. So bear with me. But the point is there. Then David came to Nob to Achimelech, the priest. And, and you should really read the whole story to get the, the momentum of it. But he comes um, and Achimelech was afraid of the meeting of Dan or of David and said unto him, Why art thou alone and no man with thee? And David said unto Ahimelech, I don't know if I'm saying it right, the priest, the king hath commanded me a business and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of, thy, of the business whereabout I send thee and what I have commanded thee. I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. Okay? He's commanded his servants to such and such a place. 
Now therefore, what is under thy hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand, or, or what there is present. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under my hand, but there is hallowed bread. This is what Christ was saying when his men were hungry. Bread. There's Sabbath bread. It's the Sabbath day. If the young man, but he says, okay, so if there is no common bread under my hand, but there is hallowed bread. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women. So he's wanting to give it, but they, they have to have kept themselves from women for him to be able to do this lawfully. And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth, women have been kept from us about these three days. The three days. Since I came out and the vessels of the young men are holy. You know, way back up in Revelation, I won't pull it up, but somewhere in the end of Revelation, it says, let those who are righteous be righteous. Those who are holy be holy. Those who are filthy be filthy. And those who are, you know, whatever. I can't remember the exact wording, but you can go and check that out yourself. I came out and the vessels of these young men are holy and the bread is in a manner common. Yea, though it were sanctified this day, that's the Sabbath, in the vessel. Sanctified. So, that's one clue. Now, you, that's why you have to have ears to hear this. People will not, some of them will not hear it. Some of them will not think this is important. Um, I'm going to go to 2 Samuel now tie something in because I'm close. Second Samuel 11 about an example of one of the, an example of, um, okay, an example of why it's even called the key of David because David knew the law better than even his rabbis did. Okay. He understood the law. He meditated upon it day and night. He was a man after God's own heart. These are why David is super important. Now, 2 Samuel 11, And it came to pass, after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle. This is the time in the spring when kings go forth to battle. That's important in this whole scenario as well to know this, because when the, when the sixth seal happens, it will happen in the spring. Learn the parable of the, of the fig tree. When it casts forth its untimely figs. This ties into Isaiah 28, into the into what the Messiah was telling you about all this all the time, into even 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I think it is. Is it first or second? I can't remember, but be not ignorant of this. That um what what, what was I gonna say there? About um or you brethren are not ignorant of this that the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night. That's the sixth seal. When the devil gets cast down, that's the thief in the night. <clears throat> you have to know that. That's how it all ties together. The Bible's very idiomatic, and it comes together through these sayings, and that's why I, I use the KJV, because these other versions, they take those sayings out, makes it more difficult to even hear. And then, yes, the KJV is not. It's polluted, full of the lying pen of the scribes. you got to dig into the Strong's Concordance. That's why you rely on the Holy Spirit. Something won't add up with other things that you've read. You dig into it, and then you realize, oh, my goodness, they changed this word. That's why it doesn't line up. So listen, have your listening ears on. But that comes through sanctification through the Word of God. You keep reading it and reading it and reading it. And you, you, know, and you will be given, you'll be given the meat in due season, and you will be given the talents that Messiah promised that you would have. So let's read this. In the spring, when the kings go to battle, okay? This is relating to the 144,000 even, okay? So when it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David said to Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbi, but David tarried still till Jerusalem. And it came to pass in the evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked up on the roof of the king's house from the roof 
from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, I think is how you pronounce it, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness which means her period, which that's why it says don't touch blood. That's one thing that the Gentiles were told not to do. And she returned unto her house. And, and that's in Acts 15. I'm just giving you an example as it pops up here. And the woman conceived and, se and sent and told David and said, I am with child. And David sent to Joab saying, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And Uriah was come unto him. David demanded of him how Joab did and how the people did and how the war prospered. And David said unto Uriah, Go down to your, to your house, wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and went not down to his house. Why wouldn't he do that? That's what you got to ask yourself right there. Why wouldn't he go sleep with his wife? You know, he's out doing war, but why wouldn't he sleep with his wife? And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down in his house, David said unto Uriah, Comest thou not from thy journey? Why then did thou not go down unto thy house? And Uriah said unto David, the ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents and my Lord Joab and the, and my Lord Joab and the servants of my Lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into my house to eat and drink and lie with my wife as thou livest and as thou soul liveth, I will not do this thing. And David said to Uriah, tarry here today also and tomorrow and I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And at even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of the Lord, but went not down into his house. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it, it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye, fr retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. Why wouldn't he? His men needed me. He's saying, all the men are out there. Judah and Israel, everybody's out there. Both, both houses are out there to fight. They can't fight lawfully if they don't have the key of David. So if he were to sleep with his wife, he was no lo longer holy, and therefore he would have broke the Sabbath if they were attacked on the Sabbath day, and likely they would have been. So, and likely they were. So, unfortunately he died. There's probably more lesson to that story than meets the eye as well that I'm not aware of. You know, because it this chapter has something to do with the end days as well, because it has to do with the kings. The 144,000 are going to have the key of David. And that is not including women and children. Only men are ever numbered in the, in the number. So there's a verse in Revelation 12, when the man child gets caught up to the throne. And this is what the Christian churches uses, use to say, or some of them will, about the rapture. But there is, and there is a rapture. Christ says to be watching that's the key word, watch and pray always that you will be accounted worthy to escape all these things coming upon the earth. In Isaiah 57, 1, it says that, um, that the righteous are taken out of the way and no one considers that it's for the things, they're taken out of the way for the things that are coming upon the earth. You know, the, the reason why you need to know scripture is because you start to understand what this is talking about and then you start to warn people. That's what it means to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind and your neighbor as yourself. That's why, the, because you know what God's word's saying and then you tell the people and warn them so that they can correct themselves and get right, get in the right path. The truth will set you free. This is the truth. 
Messiah came, gave us the Holy Spirit so we'd remember everything he said. So what did he say? He said to go love God and your neighbor as yourself, which means you keep the covenants and you warn people to repent. And the whole church is apostate. This is the falling away that everybody is not catching on to. And that's why we're going to jump up to... I'm going to actually go backwards again. I'm going to go to um, Exodus chapter 19. Oops. Okay, I don't know what verse it is, but because my wife has been in this part of the Bible because there's notes everywhere and they're not mine, which is funny. Oh. Here's a verse I want to bring up to your attention just so you know. When, when Peter and, and Paul both talk, tell you about a peculiar people, it's in the New Testament, and he makes them the, the priests, okay? The priests and the kings. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shall speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses returned and the words of the people returned and the words of the people of the people unto the... Oh, he returned the words of the people unto the Lord. This is Deuteronomy 5 talk. This is when they were making the verbal vow. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with them, with thee and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the, unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day. For the third day... The Lord will come down in the sight of all people among Mount Sinai, and the Lord shall set the bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves that you go not up unto the mount, nor touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the mount shall be surely put to death. There shall not a hand touch it, touch it but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live when the trumpet soundeth long. Then shall come up to the mount, and Moses went down from the mount unto the people, and sanctified the people, sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes, and he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day, come not unto your wives. That's the holy. Okay, listen to this. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning. That's the Sabbath begins at dawn. That's another part right there. Right here you're being taught this, the day begins at dawn and the key of David. Now it's not going to call it the key of David. It's evidence in the law as to these things. Now the priestly order, when you see this with, with um, Elizabeth and what's, what's Elizabeth's husband again, name again? Elizabeth... What was his name, you guys? Zachariah. Zachariah, when he was done his order, he went in unto his wife and she conceived. But when he was, when, when Zachariah was doing his priestly temple duty, he was separated from his wife. That's why the priests were holy and they could break the Sabbath and be held guiltless. And they always did because they were always doing sacrifices and working on the Sabbath day. But because they were holy, they could not profane. They profaned it, but they were always held guiltless because the, they were sanctified. That's the point. That's what means to hear the law even better than the teachers. And your teachers don't know this. You can go and listen, to, like in the churches I'm talking about. They, even in Judah, they don't know this. 
find somebody that knows this because I'm certainly looking and they don't, they don't know this. And this is the reason why there's people given the key of David in the last days and they're the ones that are going to hear it are going to hear it because it's not for everyone to hear. So let's go to Joshua chapter 6. I don't remember what verse it is, but you know what? Spare me to have to read this whole thing to you. You can read it, but I'll tell you as you read it, it will tell you that they put, they put away the women and children. And I think it's Joshua six. I hope I'm right might be 10, might be Joshua 10. I'm sorry if I might have it wrong, but you can do your own looking, looking into this otherwise. But I'll tell you the story. You already know the story. They marched around Jericho for, for seven days. One of those days was a Sabbath day, okay? They can't break the Sabbath day, but they did break the Sabbath day. Where can they hide? I don't know. But they did break the Sabbath day. But what was the key factor in that story, what you should notice, is they put away the women and children, away from the, the men. So that's what they, you need to notice in that story. That's why they could, they could war on the Sabbath day. And it was likely the Sabbath day that the walls came tumbling down. Okay? So that's something you can listen to and hear. So, so there you go. That's another example. So now I'm going to jump up to Isaiah chapter 22, verse 22. I'll read actually a little bit more than just that. But. Dad, can you tell me what to hide? I didn't know. Um, That's good spot. Yeah. Okay. Can you tell me what to hide? I didn't know. A good spot's in the trees over there. No, I mean inside. I don't know, honey. Go hide in the garage. She'll never find you there. Okay, I'm going to start at verse 20. Hopefully this will, will work for to drive the point. And it shall come to pass that in that day I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and I will clothe him with thy robe and strengthen him with thy girdle, and I will commit thy government into his hand, and he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. And the key of the house of David I will lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open and none shall shut, and he shall shut and none shall open. When the, when the Old Testament is being quoted by the New Testament, there's a reason for that. And I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place, and he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house and I shall and they shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house the offspring and the issue the vessel all vessels of small quantity from the vessels of cups even all the vessels of flagons in the in that day says the Lord of hosts shall that the nail that is fastened in the sure place be removed and be cut down and fall and the burden that was upon it shall be cut off for the Lord hath spoken it so this is going to happen now you're going to see, it is talking about Yeshua, but you know that fastening a nail is also talking about a servant, the bond servant, okay? The bond servants, they would get a, a nail driven through their ear. They would be offered freedom. It's talking about, they'd be offered freedom, but they would say, no, I want to serve you. Because they, they, these, and these servants are re re reflective of the bond servant is even in Revelation chapter 1 to the servants. They're writ this book is written to the servants who will do the things that are written therein. That's the book of Revelation. That's talking to the bond servant. The parable of the, of the prodigal son. The returning of the house of Israel. Oh, we, we threw away our inheritance. We did all these wrong things and all of our fathers. You're going to comprehend that you're going to sorrow for your family, your ancient family, what Israel did to God. 
because they did the Christmas tree and the Easter bunny and all those things. They broke his commandments and there was great suffering for years and years and years. They were devoured into the Gentiles. The Gentiles conquered them, the oppressors. They did all this stuff. You realize you'll see it. You'll be ashamed for it. And then it goes to the unjust steward. Quickly, I've read the Bible so much. It tells us we just have to repent from these things and get ready. There's, God's going to give us the feast back when we return to the kingdom. He's going to restore his calendar. He's going to put the pure language in our mouth. He's even going to take the name of Baal out of our mouth. The name of Jesus, the winter solstice demigod that they caused us to worship. We're going to be angry at a foolish nation. Romans 10, 19. Deuteronomy 32. The song of Moses, the redeemed of the Lord are going to sing. This is going to take place. For the Lord has spoken it. The key of David. Yeshua taught us the key of David in Matthew 12. Paul taught it in 1 Corinthians 6. But I'm going to go and show you what it says here about the, about the key of David starting in the chapters that even prophecy scholars refuse to read. And that's Revelation 1, 2, and 3. Revel it's boring. All that repentance stuff, that's boring. We don't have to repent. We're saved by favor. That's why they can't hear. They don't have a, they don't have a heart for, they don't have the heart of David, a man after God's own heart. They don't, they're not like David at all. They're not like Yeshua. They don't want to know what the Father wants them to do. They want the Father to do it all for them. The burden of the Lord, the burden of the Lord. We're saved by favor. That's exactly what they're told not to do. You have to have eyes to see this stuff and care about what God's word really says. And then you have to care about the people to rebuke them, to get them out of the, out of the massive lies that are in this world, up to and including to be patient in silence and don't speak evil against your captives. You're captive in the, this system. The revelation of Yeshua Messiah, which God gave unto him to show his servants, the bond servants, things which must surely come to pass. And he sent it and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John, who bear record of the word of God and the testimony of Yeshua Messiah and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things that were written therein for the time is at hand. One of the things that is written therein. For the time is at hand. And the angel of the church of Philadelphia write these things to he that is holy, he that is true, he that, he that has the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shut, and shut, and no man open. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door that no man can shut, for thou hast a little strength. He's giving the key of David to these guys that have a little strength, yet have yet has kept my word and has not denied my name. And behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet to know that I have loved thee. Come out of her, my people. Not right now. I won't be too much longer, though. This is not going to be a long video. I will make them... Now, everybody's got their own idea of that, especially the foolish cult of the BHI. But the, those who, who, who the, the apostles and Messiah were talking about, they are of their father, the devil. That's what, that's what makes them Jews and on the outside, but not on the inside. That's what it's talking about. And that goes for everybody. It's not just the Jewish people. Everybody who's of their father, the devil, that tells a lie, who loves a lie, and maketh a lie, will not even enter into the kingdom of heaven. So, likely, the better word to even use here rather than Jews is Hebrew. Those who say they are Hebrew and are not, because they do not act like a Hebrew. They, they are not a Jew inwardly. There is no dis distinct distinction between Jew and Gentile any longer because, first of all, the northern kingdom of Israel and a bunch of Judah was all scattered inside of the Gentiles anyways. There was no such thing as a purebred Gentile 
and there's no such thing as a purebred Israelite, not after the, especially in the Northern Kingdom, because there was 2,730 years of blending. But the Spirit is what sets these captives free. And the prophecy is that by the Spirit of His grace, when the church goes apostate, when they go full tard, you never go full tard. You know, isn't that a Hollywood saying? They went full apostate. That's when the northern kingdom of Israel starts rising up. And if you do the mathematics on that, according to prophecy, it is 2,730 years from 722 BC, brings you to 2008, 2009 in there, give or take. And that's why you started seeing people rising up out of the Gentiles, because the church has been stripped of the truth. And they're just full of fables. And Paul warned us about this. Peter warned. Yeshua warned. They all warned. They're going to be given up to fables. They're going to be get, God's going to give them up to a strong delusion that because they love not the truth. And here's the truth. They don't even know about the northern kingdom of Israel rising up in the last days, nor do they want to because it doesn't fit their doctrine. Yet it's in their own family members that are going to do this. This is why Messiah says, I'm not here to bring peace to the earth. I'm here to bring a sword. For your, your family members are going to be divided in your own houses because of this. That's what he's talking about. Because when he's quoting that, he's quoting the Old Testament prophets. That's why you enter into the work of the prophets. What they've already sown, you reap it. Because they already told us the story. That's why we have these things. Listen to this. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. What's he patient for? The lost sheep of the house of Israel returning. Even. Okay? I came not for the world. I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. These are special to Yeshua. The Gentiles. He took also a portion for God. Because God's word says. I will take a portion of Gentiles unto myself. That's in Acts 15. But the lost sheep of the house of Israel are going to rise up. That's why it says, come out of her, my people. And God deliberately scattered his people into the great whore and her many daughters. That's in Isaiah 47, 48, 49. It's being quoted in Revelation chapter 17 and 18 about the whore church being run by the evil family mentioned all through scripture. Those who say they are Jews and are not. But when you fall into their trap, you become part of that family. You become also a Chaldean. You do not care about the lost sheep of the house of Israel if you do not care about what Messiah cared about. Even though the Gentiles were given an opportunity to be saved, this is by election now. That part is over. It's now the dispensation of election. And the church does not like that, but they're not teaching the truth. And that's why the calling is going out. And I guarantee you this, this book is already, it's already finished. God already told us the, the beginning and the end. So everybody who will actually repent, will actually repent. Nothing I can do to change that. But I'm the only thing I can do is my duty right now as a servant and call for repentance. But here we go. Because thou hast kept my word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon the whole, the, all the world to try them that dwell on the earth. But if he keeps you from the hour of temptation, it's is only to try them that dwell on the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold fast that which has, thou hast, that no man take your crown. Him that overcome will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall no more go out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem. And the watchmen are going to shout until New Jerusalem is a praise in all the earth. But let's go back to this. Behold, because thou hast kept the word. This, you've done this. You've kept the word. What's the word? You better know the word. Love your neighbor and love God. What do those two commandments mean? That means to know what the Bible says and to rebuke. That's what it means. In a nutshell, you, I mean, to be general, I mean, you better understand this word. If you love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, then show him and start studying his word. And then he will keep you from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. 
I'm going to Revelation 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven in 2017, September 23rd. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and twelve upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth that are riding the beast, the great horn or many daughters. And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and to the dragon and stood before the woman which was ready to de be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. The signs are put. People never understood this even when it was happening including myself. I had to wait and patient, patient, patient. And then finally he showed me that red dragon is the sixth seal. That's when the 144,000 get caught up to the throne, but it doesn't happen until see that when the woman appeared, it was getting people ready. That's when they were being woken up. They, they, that was helping them. That was bringing them to the attention. What's going on. It was who is going to overcome. They will end up receiving the key of David. And hold fast to that which you have. If you guys have the key of David and you believe it and you see it, you hold fast, you keep rebuking, and he will keep you from the hour of temptation. And here's where it says one of the places. And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth the man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness. That's the, temp the hour of temptation is the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God. God has this all prepared. It's in the word. It's the second Exodus. And they stood and... And they should, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil, Satan, which deceives the whole world. The great whore and her many daughters riding the devil. And he was cast of your father, the devil. And he was cast into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud, loud voice in heaven. Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brethren, Zechariah chapter three, is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. And they overcame, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word, you have not denied my word, the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. They didn't look to save themselves, they're looking to save others. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Who dwells in heaven at that point? Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath because he knows that he has but a short season. The same short season, the woman goes into the wilderness where God has a place, place prepared of her away from the face of the devil is when, when the second exodus takes place. But don't kid yourself. The first exodus will be similar to the second exodus. And that in those days, those people were being oppressed in a lot of slavery. These people today are being impressed by a lot of sin. And that's going to be a time of, of purging out through the wilderness. And that's how a lot of people are going to be shown mercy through that. And a lot of people are going to be well, gather the tares first and burn them. Put it that way. That's that. That's the uh, the occasion. So who's going to do that? The 144,000, it looks very, very much so. So what they do is they go and they put they put forth this task. And they, they 
they battle the devil. But they're, as they're taking the woman through the wilderness, and that's what it looks like. But they, if they fall on the sword, they're not killed. Nothing happens to them. They're their most powerful army. It's a Joel. The Joel 1, 2, 3. It's just th three chapters. Read it. That's what they end up becoming. We'll go to 14. I looked, and lo, the Lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him 140 and 4,000, having his Father's name written in their forehead. And I heard from the heavens as a voice of many waters, as the voice of great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song, save the 140 and 4,000, which were redeemed from the earth. That's who's redeemed from the earth. And therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come singing unto Zion. The church knew this already back in the day. But guess who changed? The great whore, whoever's leading from the top. It doesn't matter. We don't need to even name names. You guys can think about it and see it happening in the world yourselves. They took the, the hymn book away from you way long time ago. And then they, they started putting this charismatic movement into the church. And they started teaching false doctrine. And they started to send their infil infiltry into your churches to teach you smooth ear tickling doctrine. They've infiltrated your, your, your uh, the schools for the pastors and everything. Teaching thousands and thousands of different kinds of doctrine in every different church. There is no agreement. Everybody's against everybody. They're all lying. They're liars to each other. And that's why they're not going to be redeemed like this. Not the way the 144,000, which is written to the seven churches. Which, guess what? Those seven, seven churches represent where the northern kingdom of Israel was when they got scattered, which is the area of Turkey, which was Assyria. It didn't write to the seven churches of Rome or Spain. It specifically was in Turkey of of Asia, it calls it, but that's where Turkey was. Those seven churches is exactly where the northern kingdom of Israel was sent. It's even in that is prophetic of the northern kingdom of Israel rising up. And I'll tell you, Judah doesn't want this to happen. The Christian church doesn't want this to happen. And the devil doesn't want this to happen. That's why he's accusing them day and night. And that's Zechariah 3. But they have the key of David. The key of David is important to you if you can receive it in your heart. If you can receive it in your heart and it is more special to you than anything else, that to, 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 to even see it, that, that's why it's so important. And to believe it and to trust. That's why the hour of temptation. Uh, Psalm, can you do the hour of temptation, Psalm? I can't remember where it is. Oh, 95. That's, a, yeah, it's Psalm 95. But that's important too because when it talks about Psalm 95, which those of you who have followed followed along in my other, other things I've been teaching, okay, I was just talking about Hebrews 3 and 4. Now let's go to Psalm 95. Those, this is a catch-up of what we were even talking about there. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is great, a great God, and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is is his also the sea is his and he made it and his hands formed the dry land oh come let us worship and bow down let us kneel before the lord our maker for he is our god and we are the people of his pasture the sheep of his hand today if you will hear his voice harden not your hearts as in the provocation as in the day of temptation in the wilderness that's the day of temptation in the wilderness when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my, my work, 40 years long I was grieved with this generation and said, it is a people that do err in their heart and have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. He's swearing in his wrath. These people who will not learn God's ways are not going to enter into the kingdom. Hebrews 3 and 4 is talking about this and everybody's so rebellious about the Sabbath and it begins at dawn. The day dawns in your heart, which is another promise right beside the key of David. And it's right there in Hebrews 3 and 4 as well. 
the message is, is that they didn't mix it with faith. They did not mix it with faith. So, if you were to take the time, as those of you who have stuck through this the whole time, please go read three, Hebrews 3 and 4, and then connect it with even Hebrews chapter 10, which is telling you to keep yourselves assembled together. I will, you, will, you, you must either go to Isaiah' Sabbath gathering or some other gathering you have in your own town, if you, do, if you already have that, great. Or I'll, I will do a little thing. I, I can, can't do much on this YouTube, but I can answer questions and we can talk through the chat that way and I can answer questions that way. And, and um, good, yeah, please, because we just read the Psalms and then, and then brother or brothers and sisters, go and listen to the Psalms. There is a boatload talked about about that final lost sheep in the house of Israel generation and they are going to save the world those in the world that are going to be saved it's this is the process God is to his servants he's going to save a bunch of people in the world you will be smiling at, at people being saved you don't want destruction but if we don't work and we don't allow his spirit to help us and we don't listen to his word when he pours out that the, the former rain, when we're, right now we are living in the, a portion of time where he's pouring out a portion of the former rain. He withdrew his spirit from people a lot over the years because they're disobedient. His spirit will not dwell with men who don't obey him. Now, the spirit of grace is different than the spirit of truth. The spirit of grace is our conviction on our heart. He allowed that to remain. But people will trample the spirit of grace. They've t named it a totally different thing than what it really is and it's conviction to follow God's ways. If we trample that, then what sore punish, punishment will we have? But the spirit of truth comes after and it brings, it brings you to the knowledge and wisdom of this book. And it does come to you because God wants his people to dig into this book. If you do not want to dig into this book, you will not learn and he already knows your heart and he knows you don't want anything to do with digging into his book. He knows what you're doing. He knows every man's heart. You know? He knows every man's heart. He knows my heart. He knows Sabbath Dan's heart. He knows your heart. So if you don't want to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, you're never going to read this book and try to find out what he's saying in it because once you start going down that rabbit hole, though, it's the, it, you, you realize it's God talking to you. He's the one revealing these things to you, these mighty things, the hidden manna, that's why he says, what I tell you in, in darkness, you tell them in the light. Make it easy for them to understand. Because the Bible isn't written for, in certain cases, to be easy, easily understood. So that it can be preserved that way. And that the glory goes, gets given to God because it's his spirit that gives you the answers. There's not a chance I would ever... The only reason why I got the key of David is because I was obedient. That's why. I, there's not a way... No way to at all I would be able to even tell you about it unless the Lord showed me and it took an immense amount of reading and studying and listening to him and believing him and trusting him when he told me the Sabbath begins at dawn the Sabbath begins at dawn I doesn't matter what people say it's all through the word of God it's very easy to see it's important that's the prophecy that's how come a day begins at dawn or dawn the day dawns in your heart God knew the whole time they were going to pollute his Sabbath and it's all the way back in Micah chapter 2 that the, that the evil family is going to pollute his Sabbath. This is, not the, this is not their rest. Okay? They're the ones that are removing the inheritance from, from uh, the northern kingdom of Israel. So what, what does it say in, in Hosea? The watchman of Ephraim is with his God. Okay? The watchman of Ephraim is with his God. The watchmen are going to take the children that are going to be saved to Mount Zion. Jeremiah 31. Hosea chapter 9. You guys got to believe the Bible. When somebody's telling you these things, it's not the man that you're believing. It's the word of God you're believing. Because the man that can proclaim what the word of God is saying believes the word of God. 
you check what he's saying. All men. You don't ever believe a man. You go read what these things say. If you want to be saved, enter into life. You keep the commandments. And when Christ said that, when he said to the Pharisee that said, well, what's the two greatest commandments? The man already knew. And he says to the Messiah, he says to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. He already knew the Messiah was coming to elevate the law. Happy Sabbath. I don't know if you're talking to me or you guys are talking amongst yourselves, but um, still happy Sabbath to all of you. But when Christ came to elevate that law, that Pharisee already knew he was going to do it. And Messiah said to him, the kingdom of God is near to you. But what did the church do? They, th they went and said, when it says the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments, they don't understand what that means because they don't know the two commandments. Why? Because they made up their own imagination of what those two commandments mean because they don't have ears to hear because they don't care to even read the word of God and loving God with all your soul, heart, soul, and mind. They don't do that because they're not reading the word of God. If they were to read the word of God and read it, line, they would come up to Isaiah 28 at some point and say, oh, we're supposed to read scripture line upon line, here a little, there a little, precept upon precept. <coughs> oh, when Yeshua said, go learn what this means, I prefer mercy, not sacrifice, which I didn't get to, and I'm going there right now. We read it in Matthew. It's the second time he says it, by the way. He says it in 9, chapter 9, and he says it in chapter 12. So this is the last thing I'm going to read and then I'm going to hang this up. Hosea, chapter 6. I'll even read a little bit back because this is, this is in Hosea, is all about the destruction of America. All right, so take that to heart. But here's, the, here's what he even tells you. So really, he's telling America. All right, Ephraim. Oh, Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? Oh, Judah. What shall I do unto thee? He calls Ephraim, the United States, moth. And he calls Judah, rottenness. Where they dwell together. Okay? For your God, your goodness is as the morning cloud and as the early dew, it goeth away. You're a fading flower. Isaiah tells you in a different way. Isaiah 28 which is where you learn reading scripture, line upon line, here a little, there a little, precept upon precept. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, I have slain them by the words of my mouth. He's already told you what's going to happen to you if you don't repent. And thy judgments are as a light that goeth forth. All right? For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. They were representative of things, you guys. The burnt offerings was to show people to obey. And the knowledge of God is to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. He talks to you through his book. He points things out that you would never know. It was written there in front of our face this whole time. You've got to be kidding me. And it was right there the whole time. But... Pastor Bob and Rabbi Bob are not telling us the truth. They are not feeding the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And there's a severe punishment coming to them for that. For removing a man's heritage. In Micah chapter 2. With their polluted Sabbath day. That's on the, on the southern kingdom side. But on the northern kingdom side, the house of Israel. These pastors are doing everything against the word of God as well. And they've... They've gone back to these bad ways. I Okay, so. For I desired mercy, not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But they, like men, have transgressed the covenant, and they have dealt treacherously against me. So you can keep reading, and you should look. When it says things about Gilead, go look at what happened in Gilead. I mean, it's a kind of an ongoing thing through the Bible, telling you these things. They're talking about, you know, Ephraim casting his children to the murderer. That's all about the abortion going on right now. Things like that. It's all talking about when you do Christmas and Easter, you're putting your fire children into the fire of Moloch. It doesn't mean necessarily just your specific child either. It means your 
all the people in your country. There's children getting slaughtered underground and all this stuff because the wicked church is doing these these pagan uh, these pagan rituals, being partakers of this sin, enabling the evil to to go on underground and empowering demons, and then they go start speaking evil against what they're empowering. You yourself by by um, subject or subjecting your family to these pagan rituals and being partakers of it are partaking in all the sin that's going on because of it. All the covetousness and the punishments coming <clears throat> to God's wrath is coming down on the children of disobedience, which is this wicked end days generation of vipers. <clears throat> so those of you who want to have the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings, better pay attention to the, especially the two parables. Well, all of them really, but in this case, the parable of the unjust steward is going to say quickly, write a check for half. That's something to know about. It's in my videos if you want. you got to study these things out. It doesn't make a lot of sense to hear what I'm saying and not study it out for yourself because you really got to chew on it and, and have God. You want God talking to you, not me. I'm just telling you what he's already shown me. So what I want you to experience is the same thing. That's how you do it. you got to go study it out and chew on it, and then you will, then you will learn how, how amazing the word of God is because these are the, if you want the truth to set you free, you better be accepting that these things are the, the, that are going to be given to you that will set you free. The, another place is 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that, um, you know, talking about the, the, the Lord will give you um, something is able to help you in the, um, keep you from the hour of temptation. So Paul knew about it. So, that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm not sure. I'll try to find it. I don't want to have to go through the whole chapter, but Brother Nathan brought that up. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Okay, so, okay, this, okay, I got to read back a little bit. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day, three and 20,000. Neither let us tempt messiah as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents neither murmur look at back at these things that it's referring to neither murmur ye as some of them murmured and were also and were destroyed of the destroyer well the destroyer of the gentiles is coming okay that's satan now all these things happened unto them for examples to us that's what it's saying for examples and that they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Okay? Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with, with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my... This is talking about giving you... Um, an escape. My dearly beloved, flee thee from idolatry. Please, you know, flee from idolatry. I speak to, I speak as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. Get away from all that covetousness. Do not worship your material things, anything like that. Do not put your hockey game ahead of preaching the word of God right now. It's not the time. You already had your time when you did whatever you wanted. You realize you woke up. Now it's time to get to work. You don't got much time. Okay, I'm going to end it there. I hope that 
gave you guys some, um, you got to go read Joshua 6 or 10 or whatever. I can't remember. I'm going to come back later on <clears throat> this afternoon and, and um, give people the chance to, to chit chat. And I don't ever keep those videos anyway, so it doesn't, you know. Um, maybe what I can do is some of you who may want to talk, I can add you if you want to come on here. There's a, I think there's, a, there's an option. I just don't know if I can do it and then cut you off and then add another person. We can just talk and everybody can hear. If there's questions like that, if you want to do that, if I can figure out how that works, maybe one of you know how that works, but we can try that. But anyways, chew on the key of David because that key of David has everything to do with a, um, a man of faith or a woman of faith, all right? Now, 1 Corinthians 6, a lesson you need to know about this. If you are, it, it, it's important to study that out. When Paul is teaching the key of David, Paul is even talking about the key of David right here again. But just go back to like four chapters to six and you'll see that he says that I would prefer that you stay single. So because it's a lot easier for you to keep the key of David if you're single. But if you're lusting after your virgin, your, 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 your partner, okay? If you're lusting after her or him and you guys are burning inside for lust, you're not sinning, but that you keep that fast. That's the fast. And he teaches it by permission. It's not for everybody to hear. Yeshua said the same thing. Okay? There's just verification right there that this is a major thing. So keeping the key of David is showing God how much more important he is than even your lust for, for your, your wife and, or your husband in, in those areas. That you would keep that keeping yourself whole, trusting him. He says you're holy, your vessel is holy, and then you can't really, you can't even break the Sabbath. But when, go back to, sorry, it was chapter seven, apologize. It's six and seven. But in seven, he teaches that part. But he says just a little earlier in chapter six, I believe that's how it goes. He says, everything is lawful for me, but it's not expedient. And that goes, now jump to Isaiah 56 and learn what's being said to the eunuch there that keep your hand from doing evil. It's not expedient to be going around and doing these things for your own pleasures. You're supposed to be doing the work of God and pulling people out of the ditch. So if it comes across, you you cannot break the Sabbath, but it, you know, it, you, at the same time, see when they, what were they doing? They were eating. So while they, they're out there working and trying to save people and when they had to have a break and have something to eat, the Pharisees are pointing the finger at them. That kind of thing. They're not at their homes with a prepared meal. They're out doing the work. That's why he was be able to break the Sabbath even like that. They weren't doing it for their own pleasure. They were doing it because they, of sustenance. They needed to eat. Or they, would, they would have fainted type thing. But they're out there trying to bring people to the Lord and teach them the gospel. So even by example, Yeshua showed you that. You know? And what, what, was, what was David in the midst of doing? You know, He was fighting for his life and that that's what they they did even and they battled it at sabbath time because the people knew that oh these israelites they keep the sabbath so they won't fight so god gave them a provision in their law that enabled them not to be able to break the sabbath and it's you know that's why that's why the knowledge of god is more than burnt offerings because and that's why david was a man after God's own heart because he knew the law and the prophets, even the law, better than his rabbis did. And that's how, why Yeshua, he's talking about you have the power to become the sons of God. Psalm 80, 82, I mean. And that is what Yeshua is even talking about. That's what God desires. And you will not be ashamed if you do that. That's the point. And then so some of us have some more talents than you. In order for you to get those talents, we freely give them so that you can get to that place. And that's what brotherly love is. And that's what loving your neighbor as yourself is in the sense that you tell people to repent from the sin. Some of you guys already repented from sin, but you want the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. You want to tremble at his word. You want them to call your name evil and separate themselves from you. Because then the blessing is great to you. Because you're doing your job then. That's what it means. It means that it works. It's working. 
you know, and you're finding people. As many people as um, are, are called will be, will be, um, it, they will understand these things. So, if the people in the whole entire world want to lie to everybody, what's that to me? I want people to be saved so those other brothers and sisters that have the same kind of heart and care about other people to have the truth, that's who's going to be saved. Not those others. Not until they go, some of them will because they're going to go through a harsh punishment. That punishment will cause them a repentance. When they, well, what, did, what did Messiah say? Men's hearts will fail them for fear of the things that are coming upon the earth. That was, he's not joking. It's not going to be comfortable. It's not going to be pretty. You know, the devil's going to, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, but blessed are those who dwell in heaven. You see, I don't teach pre-trib rapture because that word comes alongside of a bunch of false precepts from the apostate church. I teach about the 144,000 being caught up to the throne like the Old Testament even says. So, and some of us, some of us will go through the, the exodus and some of us will lead the exodus. And some of us will be doing other things. There's different, I don't know it all, but... I know this much. Yeah, Wednesday. No, it starts Thursday. You keep yourself holy three days unto the Sabbath. So when the you'll see it in the in the in the when David, David is talking to the priests on the Sabbath day, asking for the showbread, saying we've kept ourselves um, we've kept ourselves from women these three days. It's three days. Same same thing. In Exodus account as well. They kept themselves the three days unto the the Sabbath when the Lord comes. So, and it's also in the, it, no matter what, if you don't have the key of David at all, you're still pr completely prohibited from having sex on the Sabbath at all. And that's in Jubilees chapter 50, and it's in Isaiah 58 as well. Keeping yourself from your own pleasures. In Isaiah 58. So don't ever have sex on the Sabbath day. Don't go lusting and pleasuring yourself when on the day of the Lord. Ever. All right? So I'll leave it at that, and I will be back. Take care. I'll be back, and I don't know how long, though.